Hello there, and welcome to my channel, Novice Modelling and the Middle Life Crisis. Uh, my name's Andy, and this evening I'm going to be doing a quick what's in the box kit review for my RS Models 172 Kawanishi E15K1 Shion, which as you can see is a rather interesting looking float plane. So, let's uh, get inside the box and get the pieces out. I want to have a look at this uh, rather interesting kit that I have. Now this is part of a little thing that I'm doing at the moment, which is called um, Land of the Rising Sun Week, where I'm actually going to try and build 10 models over 10 days, because I'm off for 12 days. So this is what I'm actually going to be building tomorrow, if you've been watching me previously. If you're joining me for the first time, hello. Now what I normally do when I do these is I just read out the, uh, the blurb, from the instruction sheet. So here we go. The Kawanishi E15K Shion was a Japanese reconnaissance float plane of World War II. In 1939, the Imperial Japanese Navy instructed the Kawanishi Air Company to develop a two-seat high-speed reconnaissance float plane, which was required to have sufficient performance to escape, escape interception by land-based fighters. The Shion was powered by a 1460 horsepower 14-cylinder radial and the first installation of a contra-rotating propellers produced in Japan. While in a, while in a lamino, laminar flow airfoil section was chosen to reduce drag. Don't know what that is. Uh, it had a single main float under the fuselage and two stabilizing floats under the wings. The stabilizing floats were designed to retract into the wing while the central float was designed to be jettisoned in case of an emergency, giving a sufficient increase in speed estimated as approximately 90 kilometers an hour to escape enemy fighters the first prototype designed sorry the first prototype designated e15k1 made its maiden flight on 5th of december 1941 five more prototypes followed but during 1941-42 despite some problems the e15k1 was ordered into limited production as a type 2 cheyenne model 11. six were sent to palau in the south pacific Production was cancelled in February 1904, with only 15 shines completed, including the six prototypes. So, it's actually uh, quite a rare plane, it would seem. I very much doubt there's any of these left in any museums anywhere. So, uh, probably why we got the opportunity to build them. Now, having a look at the instructions, they're kind of basic. I'm kind of hoping the model isn't that basic. So we've got uh, this, this little box here, which is basically showing us the parts that we're going to receive, which appear to be on two main sprues and two small sprues. Here we have the um, rather basic cockpit interior instructions with a photograph of what it's supposed to look like. We've got two uh, seats and a piece of equipment there, a um, control stick and a instrument, instrument panel. Window two. Uh, we're going to put the wings together, we're going to put the fuselage together, we're going to put the canopy on, we're going to put the propellers on. You can see these two counter-rotating propellers. Um, we're going to put the engine housing on as well. Uh, window 3, we're going to put all the floats on. We're going to put the aerial on. And uh, well, that seems to be about it. You do actually get a trolley with it as well, which is pretty cool. So that's in window 4, and window 5 is the front view. Huh. That seems easy enough, doesn't it? Hmm, okay. So uh, let's have a look at the parts and the uh, decals. I've not actually heard of RS models, but I've had a quick look at this already and it, it seems pretty nice. I mean, it actually cost me about £17, I think. So it wasn't cheap, but it's kind of an interesting looking plane. So um, first off, we've got the... Um... Oh dear, the cockpit cover and it's quite nice the uh, detail is quite raised so that should be make it a bit easier for us to get the paint on depending on how uh, we're going to um mask it off obviously so there's that little piece we've got a nice looking selection of decals there's only one option by the look of it if, excuse me my fingers can't get in to the bag at the moment so we've got 150.02, 150.01 and another one here. So we get three different options and they're the standard Japanese roundels, obviously. So that's that little one done. This, these two uh, sprues here, 
you can see the uh, the main central float which goes together like that this also contains the two crew seats and these two pieces here which i think they're parts of the outer supports for the float the plastic on this is quite nice the detail there's, there's some detail there, you can see it, it looks quite fine, it's not in your face. The detail on some models I've seen, particularly some of my vintage models, is quite, yeah, it's, it's, there's too much detail in fact, I would say. So here we have the uh, fuselage, fuse, yeah, the fuselage. Again, the plastic's got a nice feel to it, it's my favourite thing. Panel lines, there's lots of panel lines on here. Nice and fine. There's our rather large counter-rotating propeller. These are the wheels for this little trolley here to push it in and out of the water. I'm going to hazard a guess that that's the uh, cockpit floor. There's our engine housing. Yeah, it all looks all right. Yeah, that looks okay. Here we've got the main wing. The two upper parts of the wing two outboard floats and the rest of the tail I think that's that's more of the um, little trolley I mean it seems a pretty pretty basic looking kit there doesn't seem to be that much going on but I can't find anything particularly wrong with it and you don't get many people making this sort of thing so I mean if there's only 15 of these planes made it's a rare plane and you can probably say well there's probably not many of these kits knocking around so aren't I lucky to have one um, again, I don't know an awful lot about RS models. I'm only a novice here. Why the hell would I know anything about them? I just bought them because I thought it was a cool looking plane. Um, I can tell you that the original moulding for this was made in 2010. So it's a modern kit. It's not like one of these ones that's been knocking around for 30 or 40 years. As far as I can tell from scale mates anyway. Um, this particular cover art was first produced in 2012. So it was a brand new kit when I bought it. It's just this is the current production run of it. Um, on the rear of the box, we've got our um, colour details. As you can see, we've got a sort of greeny grey underneath, a green uh, main fuselage and wing and floats, and a black front with the standard yellow identification markings. So yeah, so anyway, this is the one that I'm going to be building tomorrow. A few people have asked me to build this from the um, 13 Japanese kits that I've got. Um, today I've been building this rather nice Nakajima J1N1S Gecko, or Irving. Um, this is where we've got to so far. We've basically, yeah, it is dry now. We've basically... Um, Put the main body together we put the nacelles on we put the guns in and that's about as far as we've got we not sure whether we're going to give this another coat in the morning we might do we're going to just have a look at it in proper daylight and see how see what it looks like uh, the color isn't perfect i didn't actually have the right correct color but uh, it's it's pretty close at the end of the day it's kind of a very dark olive green it's called black green from Tamiya. Uh, this is this is called Japanese Imperial Navy black green. So it's pretty close. So yeah, that's what I've been doing today. Um I've also built this uh what's this one called? A Shinjin? Shinden. I've also built this Chinden. That's not quite finished yet either. Seem to have a habit of trying to build these planes one a day and I've sort of built four so far and I've actually completed one yet but Never mind. Anyway, I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have this Japanese sweet because I've started eating Japanese sweets and it's called something in Japanese beer. So let's open that up. Have a look at what it is. Oh great, it's it's like white powder. It'll probably tastes like beer. It tastes like something you clean the toilet with. So I'm going to wash that beer flavoured sweet down with some Asahi Dry. Take the flavour of that god awfulness away. 
Um, so uh, thanks for uh, joining me this evening. Um, tomorrow we'll be building that. Hope you enjoyed my little um, video. Please like and subscribe and join me for my model building ride. And please do check out some of the other what's in the boxes and build videos that I've been doing over the past few days. Thanks for watching. Be seeing you.